One of the things I've always gotten a charge out of over the years is how when I talk to a lot of farmers about raising wheat, they'll say, I love to raise wheat because it's a low input crop. And I go, well, what do you mean by that? Well, it doesn't cost me very much money to put the crop in. I pull some seed out of the bin, I just throw it out there, I might spray a little 2,4-D once, and then I harvest. And I say, oh, what kind of yields do you get? Well, not real great, but it's, it's so nice when I don't have to spend a lot of money up front. I, you know, I just think that is completely the wrong way to look at things. You know, I don't really care what I spend. What I care about is what I make net at the end of the year. So whether I spend five bucks up front or I spend 500 bucks up front, all I care about is at the end of the year, how's my net? How did I really turn out? Well, the other thing that I look at too is when you're talking to farmers that raise corn and soybeans and wheat, which crop do they seem to care about the most? Well, they corn. probably care about the corn because they've put the most money into that, yep. getting that crap in the ground, and they probably care about the wheat the least. And we say, wait a minute, what are you talking about? <laughs> wheat has all kinds of potential if you just pay attention to it just a little bit. And I was thinking about this uh, this morning just a little bit, how we look at our crops in standard definition. We're driving by the field at 55 miles an hour. It looks kind of green out there. Everything's good. No, we need to look at our crops in high definition and look really closely at these crops and seeing what's going on. Are we short some nutrients? Are there things with diseases or insects or weeds that we could focus on more to get even better yields? And there's tremendous potential in our wheat crop. Okay, what we wanted to focus on today with wheat yield enhancement is a couple of things that almost no farmers in the country do with their wheat. First, use a pre-emerge herbicide, and second, use an insecticide post-emerge to kill all the bugs out in your field. Wait a second, pre-emerge herbicides for wheat, that doesn't even sound right, because most of the time with our pre-emerge herbicides, we're looking for early season grass control. And when it comes to wheat, well, if I'm not mistaken, wheat is a grass, this seems to be uh, contradictive. Well, yeah, wheat is a grass, but what robs more from a grass crop, grass or broadleaves? Well, it's always grass. Grass is the toughest thing to control in a grass crop. Okay, it's easy to control broadleaves in a grass crop or to control grass in a broadleaf crop. But to take grass out of a grass crop, that's pretty tough. So you gotta start with something that's gonna get some of the grass, and then you follow up later with something that would get the rest of the grass. And the other thing too is with these pre's, if you have something that would get some of those broadleaf weeds out of the way as yep. well, so you don't have to spray uh, post-emerge for quite as many. I mean, say you had 100 weeds, if you killed 80% of them up front, now you only have 20 and they're just here and there instead of all grouped together in great big patches. Yep, but what I don't understand is how, I mean, farmers use pre-emerge herbicides all the time in corn. A lot of farmers use pre-emerge herbicides in soybeans and a whole bunch of other crops. But with wheat, it's almost never used. I just ha really have never understood that. But part of the reason is we haven't had good pre-emerge herbicides. Now we have one real good one that you can use in the spring. That's called Prepare. It's the same thing as Everest. But with Prepare and, and putting it out in the soil or on the soil, you do get some residual. You'll get some burn down activity too, but you get some residual for very little money. I mean, we're talking five bucks an acre, maybe even less than that. So don't get me wrong. We're going to talk about something that's off label. Okay, so what I'm getting at here is on the label, it'll tell you to use 0 0.3 ounces. We're not going to tell you that. I would suggest you use 0 0.2 ounces. The first reason I want you to use 0 0.2 is crop safety. I don't have any worries in just about any environment. You're going to be in great shape with 0 0.2 ounces. 0 0.3, it might be pushing it in 5% of the environments we deal with in the Midwest. Not a big deal. You can use 0 0.3 if you want to. We're using 0 0.2 on our farm. The other reason why I use that lower rate is it's a little cheaper. I can buy with five bucks or less. Either way, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3, I'm not going to kill all my weed season long anyway. So why do I want to spend more money when I'm not going to kill all the weeds anyway? Okay, the other thing is you could use some Sharpen as well. If you've got broadleaf issues, that would be a good broadleaf pre. Now it's got great burn down activity. It has some limited residual depending on what rate you're using. Uh, typically an ounce is five bucks or less, so you could do an ounce in front of your wheat. Too. Yeah, it's not even that. I think it's 350 in a lot of cases. So, I mean, it's really cheap. So what we're saying is now we've got a couple of good options between the sharpen and the prepare. You can put something down in your wheat that's going to get some of your grass, some of your broad leaves. Sure, it's not going to kill everything. In some cases, you might find that it does kill everything because you have such low weed pressure. 
But the point is, we want to get most of the weeds under control to start with, so it's easier for our post-emerge herbicides. Okay, well weed control is one thing, but insecticide and insect control in wheat, that's a whole new topic for okay. a lot of guys out there. They haven't necessarily been doing that. You're going to find millions, millions of bugs in every field. They're robbing your wheat yield. Yeah, they might not be taking 20 bushels off, but I'll bet you they're taking two or three. And now that you can spray an insecticide for $3 an acre, maybe five at the very, very most if you use a high rate, I mean, it's nothing. Well, okay, There's, there are lots of different insects out there. The question is, what insecticides can you use? I know for our farm, we're oftentimes limited by what we're going to mix with. Maybe we're spraying uh, a grass herbicide or a broadleaf well, herbicide. Yeah. We, we might not be able to use every insecticide in the book. Well, where Darren's going with this is you don't want to use Lorsman in a lot of those cases. Lorsman has some oils in it, and if you put it with the wrong things, like Bucktrill, for example, or Husky that contains Bucktrill, it's like you pulled a match out there and lit your field on fire sometimes. I mean, it just smokes it. But you can go out with a pyrethroid, something like Silencer or Declare, and do a real nice job and not have that kind of crop injury worry. Now, don't get me wrong. Lorsban's a great product. I would use it too. Just make sure you know what you're mixing it with because the wrong combination could hurt your wheat. Then the other thing is going to be timing with these insecticides. At which application are we doing this? That's the whole thing. Like with the pre-emerge herbicide, you can put it with some liquid fertilizer you're throwing out early. With the insecticide, we want you to throw it with a herbicide or a fungicide. I mean, something that you're already out there spraying with. So what I'm saying is you don't have to make extra trips across the field. Just look at what you can do to increase your wheat yield in that same tank full. Well, there are a lot of different things that you could do with your wheat. Once you start managing it in high definition and looking for those little details, there's some different options that could provide a great return on investment like using an insecticide or a pre-emerge herbicide. But will those options help you with our Weed of the Week? We'll show you later in the show. <laughs>